years ago. Started with the with the uh, street port here, and then uh, got developed into a half bridge. So whether you're doing a street port or a half bridge, it, it really will work either way. I've got it marked out. We're gonna drill some holes, cut a little bridge. Move on some drill guides that way uh, we've got a little bit of a path for everything to drill before we start cutting. Don't normally uh, hammer on your housings. It's technique. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got it marked out. Nice little punched in drill path on that street port using our half bridge or street port template. Some tools. Keep it basic. Making sure everything's lining up nice and centered. We're just walking our way down, making sure everything's staying in line. You don't want to go too far up into your port right here. You've got water jacket underneath, so we've got to ramp that to match the port. And same thing over here on this angle. You want to check your depth. You can uh, make some adjustments. Your main porting is done right here in the middle. All right. You can see we've uh, drilled our holes straight through, leaving these last few up here for ramping. So it matches our existing street port. Simple eighth inch drill bit, hammer, punch, KMR B2A template. Switching tools, we're going to be using our uh, carbide bit. And, uh, on the bigger porting jobs, you're using a larger bit. So for bridge port, we're switching to a small eighth inch bit. You can grind away the holes. Just really the holes are reliefs to make it easier. And you're just connecting the dots. Start of our bridge right there. Check that out. Always wear eye protection. Just continue on. All right, we've connected our dots on the bridge, and now we've got that half bridge on that street port. A little more polish and cleanup, and you're good to go. Ready. So continuing our tips and advice on bridge porting, we've now connected all of our drilled holes and we've used our nice little porting tool to create a nice bridge. Um, obviously you don't want to go into your water jacket area if you're just doing a half bridge. Your old school traditional bridges went into this area, which is what led to some of the reputation of bridge ports just not being long term reliable. So after you've done your porting and connected all of your, your holes, creating one continuous port, um, you might have some rough edges, maybe even some waves, uh, and the porting tools can remove a lot of material very quickly. So come in with a little flat diamond file, and you can actually come in 
and work your edges flat, just a little bit of a back and forth, and that way you're squaring everything up without getting excessive on your material. Same thing here, we want to actually ramp it back in a little bit so we're allowing that air to scoop up into the bridge, so coming in, working it at a slight angle just helps create the start of that passage. Just be careful not to hit your edges, you don't want to radius anything out. After you've used your file, another great trick that I was taught by another great porting master uh, is just get some thin strip sandpaper. I use a pretty aggressive grit, about 80, and you can come in and again start to lay that port over a little bit, and that way you're not hurting your bridge and you're able to remove material in a smooth radius on the back side. And if you, if you talk about porting, you always want a, a D to D. A D radius on the back side is going to create smooth airflow, so you don't want a sharp uh, wedge flat, you want something for the air to actually pick up velocity around. If you were doing this on a CNC or even spending more time, you could actually angle your bridge in and that's going to help when you drill it. This one we, we did very simply, it's just a, a straight bridge. And just a little bit of work and we've already turned that inner edge into a radius which is separating it from this other sharp edge which is going to allow your air to come in, in through that bridge. Um, so there you go, some tips and tricks on adding a bridge to your street ports or just porting in general. Porting tools, sandpaper, files, flappers, use what makes sense, have fun and don't practice on stuff that's important. Cool. So, if you're looking to get more involved in, in porting and building your own rotary motors, check out Kyle Mohan Racing and Built to Apex. We offer products, parts, um, and even some videos on how to build and port rotary engines. So, stay tuned, follow Kyle Mohan Racing.